Good afternoon and welcome to Metro Tech Tips and there we are. Why is it green? <laughs> That's a good question. There there now, we're right. now we're good. Hello everybody, I'm Brent. I'm Adam. Welcome to Metro AV Tech Tips and you may notice we're in a slightly different place today. Um, because of today's program requires a little bit more space for what Adam has in mind, yes. we're actually in the 12-volt studio, yeah. which is really kind of cool. In fact, we're thinking about doing some lobbying. Uh, maybe just a little bit and see if we can get um, that figured out. Just in case out. you're wondering, Matt Adam's over there powering up his laptop because it's not our <laughs> desk and there's not power at it. Yeah, it's someone else's desk. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for checking in with us today. Uh, pardon us as we accidentally look up at the monitor over there. We need to look at you over here on the camera. Um, if you all have any questions about what we're talking about today, feel free to leave them over in the chat section over here on the side or down in the comments. Uh, and also, just to double check, can you guys hear us okay? Let us know over in the, uh, in the chat section to make sure that we, uh, you can hear us okay. Um, and then we can go from there. But it looks like we're good to go at this point. So Brent, today's topic. AVRs, what are they, why are they, and how did we get here? So now, for many of our viewers, this is going to be, Brent, your mic is buzzy. Audio gains are too high on Brent. Okay. That's okay. Anyways, I'll fix that here in just a second. Which so, is interesting because, as, as Adam noted, we're, not, we're having a hard time looking at the camera because normally for us, the monitor <laughs> is directly behind the camera. Right. And for in their studio, it's up and to the right, so we're kind of staring into the we, sky. We keep, looking at, and we keep looking up there at that piece. But anyway, so guys, uh, yeah, we'll fix Mike's, uh, uh, Brent's mic uh, here in just a moment. Um, but all that to say, today's episode is really um wait, for wait, many wait, people before you get into today's episode what do we need to do um subscribe oh yeah. like <laughs> i was gonna say click the bell read it early read it often no <laughs> That's the end and of the remember episode. that we are in fact giving away yes an aio2 and a cs-ir kit ccus that is correct so yeah like brent said uh like share subscribe hit that little bell notification to let us uh brent sounds like brent's really hot um if you check his gain on his wireless receiver Number two on the mic, on the uh, mixer. Up, up, up. Adam? I got you. So Brent, um, uh, well, you're gonna sound kind of funny. Uh, nope, uh, go here. We are uh, setting my game. Yeah. Hopefully I'll sound a little better. Maybe regale you guys with a little bit of Sinatra or some Aerosmith. Is that any better? Well, well while they're doing that, we are giving away to the best comment, the best suggestion, the best idea, the best whatever on our YouTube channel, an AIO2 and the CS-IR, duck down, you're just a big giant black blob in front of the camera. <laughs> a CS-IR kit CCUS. Better? Um, am, are we better? We're better. We're better. We're better. better okay. Than a bucket. Uh, well, that's, a, that's, you know, you, you bring up the, the, uh, the humbucker, right? And that's kind of the, the, where you were going with that, buck well, the hum? No, it's, it's a line from the movie, are you better? Better get a bucket. I'll okay. talk to you Anyways, later. no, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about a humbucker no, on, like no. a, on like a guitar. Which um, would be probably not a bad idea today, but. No, anyways, so moving the on. The AIO2, we're giving it away. The cs ir Kit CCUS, we're giving away. Yep. At the end of this series, and this is number three in the series of four. I believe this is the third uh, episode of the series. So it's either. Is, uh, next week we are talking about. Oh, shoot, uh, you don't know what? Me. I know, right? I'm, we said uh, that that's always the wrong all thing. We did. stuff out the other day. We and you did. Have the notes. I do have the notes somewhere, anyways, but we'll, we'll figure that out. So, Brent. Adam. Today's topic is uh, now that we've kind of gotten past all of that, everybody, thank you again for checking out with us. What do you think about the set? Do you like this? Do you like the, the layout for it? How's the lighting? What do you think about it? Let us know in the chat. Don't they in, need in the a big television with the Metro AV logo? We right do there? need the, a big television here. Anyways, be careful. We, we're going to sound like we're trying to take over everything. Um, so, anyways, today's episode, we're going to be talking about AVRs. Now, I know for most of our viewers, they, that's going to be a fairly basic topic. However, I felt it was really important for us to kind of go back to basics on a lot of these items because unfortunately, we still, We're still get calls. The phone calls. We still get calls about them. And especially when it comes to, um, uh, Brandon, what is our uh, next week's episode? If you're able to figure that out for me. Um, but uh, with, when it comes to AVRs, I, they still have older types of connections or what would be known as older connections I mean, anyways. Legacy. Legacy. There you go. I like that. Legacy. Are you legacy, Brent? I am absolutely 100% legacy. <laughs> or in your words, an anachronism. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, man, we got a lot, of, a lot of good people in here. Okay. Uh, oh, Michael. 
Michael, you're right. Uh, Hi, Michael. Brent says he's off. Uh, sounds off mic. Really, guys aren't in the technology business. We are, unfortunately. I gave ourselves le uh, not enough time to get us all hooked up and ready to go. Uh, and I really apologize for that. So Brent we'll have to was fix the. I this morning so I can accept no blame, but I'll tell you the truth. Even if I were here all day, it would probably still be the same. It would still be Adam <laughs> doing all of the hard work. So I'll take the blame for that one. Uh, so again, fo apologize for that. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, so next week's episode is how to use relays. Got that in, in the chat, um, which is going to be thank a great you. episode. I'm really yeah, excited about uh, another basic we're back episode. To legacy products. Legacy products and, and back to basics on certain things. So. And not a, not, not a few. AVRs used to have relays built in. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, it had the 12 volt, it has like 12 volt triggers some, some and things like that. Some had 12 volt triggers, some actually had relays that you could use contact closure. Like actual relays. Interesting. Yes. Okay. So, what I've got for us today, we're going to wind up having, we've got one AVR sitting here. I've got another one over here on, on a rack system that we're going to go over and look at um, just because it'd be fun to look at it in a separate location. He just wants to spin the rack around. I just want to spin the rack around. I want to have some fun today. Um, so, Brent, what was the first audio video receiver that you worked with and I, I put video in there because I know that well, first audio off, receivers go back composite. much further right yeah it would have been composite yeah and it would have been the mid 80s mm -hmm. um, probably a Luxman or a Sony okay you know it's red yellow white there wasn't component back then mm -hmm. it, that didn't happen until the 90s with color stream and then component not even VGA, so it would have been analog, composite, yep. then S-Video, yep. which lasted into the 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, Onkyo Integra DNM still had S-Video on it. But really, what you see on the back mm -hmm. has not changed much. In fact, there's actually, on this 1100, I think, from Sony, is this an 1100? I believe so. Yep, it's 1100ES. Yeah, there's still two components, or a component in, component out, and composite inputs on it. Yeah. It used to be more rows of it. Yeah, of course. So nowadays, we've taken all those mini RCA connections that used to be on there. So we had five RCA connections for component, and now we've, of course, condensed it down to Actually, one HDMI. Seven. seven, because if you had uh, horizontal or, or vertical. No, no, you had RGB, yep. analog, yep. digital, oh, yeah. coax, and digital optical. That's right. Now, some in the early days, they were not assignable. Mm -hmm. So if you had like a... 3804 or 3806 Denon, for example, Yep. you may not be able to assign those inputs. It was just, here's what it is, it's assigned to this source. Right. Um, in the early days, in very early days, the, about the only optical source you had was a uh, Sony CD player. Which, because they were the ones that, of course, took, you know, built it at that point. It well, was, no, what does Toslink stand for? Oh, that was the, oh shoot. Um, Come on. To, uh, what does it say on that TV right there? Ah, Toshiba. Thank you. There it is. I, I, I knew Sony was in there. It was, it was Toshiba. It wasn't. It was Toshiba. Yeah, Toshiba. Um, uh, uh, it, well, so they, they developed it. Now, did, did they develop it together and as a... I know. Uh, Sony developed the uh, CD with uh, Philips. Mm -hmm. The optical was primarily... That version of it, the Toslink, was primarily Toshiba. Yep. But you also had digital coax at the time. So, when we look at the AVRs... now. Is AVR the term AVR or audio video receiver? Does that necessarily mean that there is an amplifier Absolutely, built into as it? As soon as you put the R in it. Okay, because it's a, it's a when, receiver. When you, and unfortunately, we don't have our whiteboard. That's the one thing I miss in this. Studio. I know. Yeah. When you look at an AVR, there's four things happening in here. Right. You've got the video switching. Mm -hmm. You have got the preamp, volume, balance, treble, stuff like that. Right. You've got all the processing for multi-channel audio, mm -hmm. and you've got the amplifier. Right. And actually, we're going to call it five, because in the old days, what made a receiver was having a built-in tuner. Yeah. Or if you didn't have a built-in tuner, it was an integrated amp. So you could technically call, you, you could have a receiver that didn't have an amplifier, or no, you could have... that would be a preamp. That would be a preamp. Okay, so then at that point it would be so wouldn't be known as an the cool thing right. for you know us legacy guys. Sure, was separate, meaning you had a separate tuner, mm -hmm. a separate preamp with the volume, the bass, the treble, the inputs, and a right. separate amp. Ah, those were called separates. When they were all together, it was a receiver. If you had the preamp and the amp together, it was called an integrated amp. Oh, so it if didn't have the no tuner, tuner right. but it had the, it had the, the volume control, it had the, the, the EQ on it, it had well, you know, the input control. Okay, yeah. Um, so then when you had the tuner, of course, that... It became the receiver. Right. That's when it became all 
you know, one. Right. And it's the same thing with this. Now, you can still buy mm -hmm. pre pros, mm -hmm. pre pro processors, Marantz, Denon, um, Yamaha, Onkyo, Integra, I think still makes one, then Indie Audio Labs, and the guys up in Canada, <laughs> Anthem. <laughs> wow. So there's. There's, you know, so you can do a pre-pro and separate amps. Right. This just has the advantage of being one piece. Right. Now, it is also not uncommon to have an AVR where you're treating it as a pre-pro. Okay. So you can get into typically an AVR for less money mm -hmm. than a standalone pre-pro. But it may have, whose phone is that? I don't know. You I think may it's a word also word. have a good quality multi-channel amp or several amps. Right that you want to run off of it. Right. For example, for years, my Denon ran my Parasound amp mm -hmm. instead of using the internal amp. Right, because you, you can pick and choose the, the amplifier that you want. So right, you could get... Right, you want an amplifier. Yeah. It's, it's actually easier to see audible gain or improvements with an amp. Right. Typically than a pre-pro. Right. So when you have, and even today, you still have the options for a preamp and an oh, amplifier absolutely. separates. Uh, um, Marantz is a really good the one that has one. 706 oh, and 08? Uh, yeah, the... Uh, I believe from yeah, Marantz. Yeah, 77, and they have an 8802 or 80, 80, uh, 8803, I believe. Oh, five, maybe? Something like that. Anyways, but they they have a the separate... I just 77 and a house, and that's an awesome pre-pro. Oh, it's a, it's a great pre-pro and it's it the nice thing is is it has the the dedicated XLR connections from mm -hmm. the back of it. Um, we're kind of geeking out about the quality of these things cuz it's it's fascinating to to us well, still anyways. So Okay, let's let's talk about that a second. Okay. Cuz when you look at a basic AVR, mm -hmm. and I say basic. Yes. Basic to me is under $2500. Okay. That appears to be about the the break point to get too serious where you add the XLR capabilities. Yes. Now the thing to know is just because you have XLR jacks on the back mm -hmm. does not guarantee it's a balanced audio output. Right. There are some AVRs that put the XLR jacks on them, but they're more cosmetic. Yeah, it, it'll get you, it'll, it'll work, it'll get you signal and you can connect it to a balanced input on the amplifier but and you'll still get audio. it doesn't really drop your noise floor the way exactly. it's dedicated balanced output yeah. does. So one of the benefits of course with the with the separate systems is that you can pick and choose those separate systems. So for instance Marantz they have a decent and actually a fairly good uh, amplifier system that's a separate as well but let's say you wanted to go for something like Sunfire or uh, Are give, they still give, in give me some Sunfire's still around. They're still doing some pretty good stuff. Those those oh, ribbon okay. tweeter I'll things that they had. Oh uh, yeah, that speaker came from somebody else. Uh, okay. yeah, 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 another thing. Um, what was? Uh, what, what, give me some other brands of uh, amplifiers. Well, there's that Anthem. You, you... There's Indie Audio Labs. There's mm -hmm. Datasat. There's um, Prepros or amps. Uh, uh, well, both, I guess. Uh, at that well, point, you know, you've got ATI, mm -hmm. um, California Audio Labs, Indie Labs, which also does Acuras. Mm -hmm. Uh, very nice sounding amplifier for the money. Parasound, which still makes some phenomenal amps. Right. With a preamp that has multi channel input. So if you have yeah. a pre pro, you can go into a serious outboard preamp with a phono jack, for example, and real balanced outputs. Right. You get looking like you're seeing a good comment. Uh, yeah, we, we're getting some. Yeah, Yamaha is a good one, Leo. Um, uh, Michael is saying uh, the AVR market was mostly in the four hundred, twelve hundred dollar range. No AVRs have XLRs, uh, only surround processors such as seventy seven oh six and similar. You're correct. Up to um, about twenty five hundred because they used to have them on the high end den because you could treat the high end. At least you could. As, as a pre. As a you, pre -pro. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you could actually have just a regular uh, analog output either through an XLR or, the or a balanced or the, unbalanced. I the 5100 or... That I don't know. That, that's a really good question. Um, but and Here's where it gets interesting yeah. because I love Sony from a setup standpoint. Mm -hmm. Because they offer a very easy web GUI to do all of your input setups to select enhanced or standard and yep. all the functionality. Their setup is phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where some of the other brands is not quite so easy to do. Sure. On the other hand, when you look at a DNM, the audio portion of that. Oh, it's great. It's fantastic. Yeah. Or you go to a, a standalone piece like an Indie Audio Labs mm -hmm. with real separate amplifiers. Now, I'm going to throw you under the bus a second. What okay. is the big advantage of separates? So. Oh, uh, okay. Why would you want separates? Does it help with signal quality? 
Um, Why? Because at that point, you're able to have a better connect, a better grounding setup, maybe, or a better, uh, better you're signal to noise ratio. Why? I don't know. You're throwing. Oh, oh wait, wait. Is it is it because we don't have all the electronics of what the what the preamp is doing inside the same but chassis? Why? Oh no, I don't know. Separate power supplies. Oh, so it's not sharing Every that same ground plane right. and all that kind of stuff. Every device has a dedicated power supply. Okay. And typically with more than enough headroom. Mm -hmm. Now let's assume we have an AVR. And yeah. Let's let's be honest. Ninety-eight percent of the jobs. Yep. Are an AVR. Yeah. Mine's an AVR. Yeah. I'm using the preamp outs to go into a separate Well, because it's, it's ridiculously easy. It's all and already it's included. Right there. Exactly. And it takes up less space. Mark Silver's saying flexibility. Uh, it, well, for, and actually that's, that's delay. He's saying flexibility for the, for the, the, the separates. Yes. Um, and you are correct. Uh, the flexibility of having two of those on that. Well, it allows you to mix and match. Let's say, for, again, for example, yeah. you want an amplifier like a Parasound Halo or an Anthem or something like that, mm -hmm. which is a step up from what's available. Right. In an AVR. Right. Well, <laughs> we're getting some really good comments. Oh, this is. I think this we've, one's gonna be a, we've, a, we've a opened up a, 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 a can of worms on this one, and I'm excited about well, it. Well, and um, you know, it's it's kind of funny because this is a conversation you gonna you and I have a lot with dealers. We do, yeah, and, and, and we have a lot of back and off, forth on as that. We all know yeah. the big issue right now is what's in stock. I, Forget the name on the front. <laughs> what can you buy today? You know, I did think about that. I thought, okay. I'm going to do an AVR episode in the midst no of, a, of, an, of an AVR drought, and I'm just going to get everybody really upset over it, so I'm really sorry about that. Uh, uh, but So uh, Michael is saying, he says, the $2,500 AVR is a rarity uh, with it decent power is. amps that match that price band would not buy a receiver. You are correct. We're agreeing with you on that. It's They may be out there, and honestly, at that price point, someone's really proud the of their... With an amp stuck well, in at, it to at, make it a... Yeah, at, 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 that bri at that price point, most of the time, it's just because the manufacturer is really proud of their product. Quote it's unquote. a flagship. Um, but at that point, if you're spending that kind of money, yeah, you should be getting a separate because you're going to get better quality overall. By the anyways. way, because, you know, as, as, as you know, I've been working on the spreadsheet for all the 2.1 products. Yeah. Which is a little more limited than what you would hope. Yeah. Particularly in the AVR yeah. market. Yep. Because what you see is available June. No, it won't be. Mm -mm. July. No, it won't be. No. Nope. August. Yep. No, it won't be. No. Nope. But $2,500, every major company has yeah. a $2,500 2.1 unit. The interesting thing is only a couple of companies have one under $500. There mm. are going to be some 449 2.1 AVRs out there. We saw that from, uh, from w w was that Yamaha that, that we yes. saw that they were getting stock of, yep. the, uh, of the lower priced ones? That, Which, one's, that one kind of surprised me because I don't think of Yamaha as being down there. No. Not normally. I mean, usually it's, it's the Denon or yeah, uh, you know, an or, entry level, or Sony, uh, Sony for that. Yeah, Sony, eight ten or something like that. Um, so you guys might be in luck. Check and see if you can find like a lower end Yamaha. Apparently, those are coming out a little bit more often. The four A and the six A. The four A and six A. Four A is like uh, four fifty, and the six A is like six fifty. I think. Leo is saying that dinosaur bones are easier to find. Yes. Yes, they are. Yeah. Go on eBay. Go on. Uh, go on Facebook Marketplace. It's it's terrible to say this right now because you're looking at buying these used items for your clients. Are you having to go to Best Buy or Crutchfield or something yeah, like just that? Yeah, just to get something sideways with it. And unfortunately, that's kind of what it comes down to right now. Hopefully, here within the next year. Mm, sure. Maybe. Now here's the thing, guys, and we have an episode coming up on this. Yeah. Um, I mentioned the two dot one. Yeah. Don't get caught up on that one because there's still a whole lot of unknowns on that. Yeah. Um, there have been some issues with the products that are currently out there that have the 2.1 chipset. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to step into a little bit of a political landmine I was going to say, you want to be careful about this one? Um, we have found that they do lock up. Yep. And the only way to unlock them consistently yep. is a power cycle. I don't mean a hot plug on the HDMI. No. Nope. It is a lockup of the processor yep. in the AVR. Yes, um, which actually, that's really good that, that you bring that up. We are going to be having another HDMI 2.1 episode uh, where we will bring to you all the stuff that we've learned uh, since the last time we had a 2.1 episode. <laughs> yeah, and it's, um, we, we have learned a lot more than we knew. We had, uh, the last episode we had, we were all, you know, hearts and rainbows and, and unicorns. Yeah, um, speak for yourself. This time around, well, I've yeah, been, no, you've been around crazy my way too long for hearts, rainbows, and unicorns. <laughs> You're just a jaded old man, so let's let's be honest legacy, about that. Legacy, <laughs> legacy, old man, or legacy man. Uh, uh, oh yeah, so uh, and Corey uh, Corey Roth is saying hey, he sells. Corey. Uh, uh, Corey's the one that I've been dealing with uh, uh, out in um, 
Washington? No, no. He, he's over on uh, on the West Coast. Um, the and West I'm not remembering it. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, 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 like uh, West, oh, West. Far yeah, coast. far left coast. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, he's saying, let's see, Mark Silver is saying, if you want uh, SET amps, but want the technology of home, th of home theater. Oh, oh, like 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 um, um, like really good amplifiers. Like yes. so, you can have really good amplifiers, but with an AVR of current modern day. Again, we're going back to the to the separates at that point is what he's saying. Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, Which is what I have in my house. Yeah, Michael is saying until the AKM factory comes back online, it'll be hell for the manufacturers along with other parts shortages or for key components. Not a pretty sight. Uh, yes, that is exactly and what's going on. The the legitimate answers we're getting yeah. is actually next year. Yeah. Not later this year, but legitimately. Right. Now, the AKM factory, they're the ones who were producing the amplifiers for these systems rather than the actual chip, the HDMI chipset. That's a different problem entirely. Yeah. Um, there are, supposedly, there's a secondary okay. chip manufacturer now that Onkyo Integra is using. Good. Or will be. So hopefully we'll see something. Will be using that doesn't have the issue of the current chipset that everybody else is using however yeah because everybody else is already using that first chipset uh -huh. we don't know how well it's going to communicate with these we'll kind of have to figure out at that point right i mean that's going to be kind of a uh you know a pain with that so um, Brent, one of the things to know that we're, that we're working on is setting up an interoperability lab yes and that's why the list we're creating the list to determine when what and how soon we can get it and yeah how much begging we have to do. Yeah, which we're just like you guys out there, uh, you know, doing the installations, even though we have all these connections and whatnot. That doesn't mean we get them because they're actually reserving them for the dealers. For the dealers. And, and, and that's good news for you because it means that they're not just holding stuff aside for people like us who are going to be doing testing. Are there they're setting people? aside for you. Uh, we've been talking to reps uh, for many different manufacturers and they all get the same thing. If you, if the rep wants one for their own use, they have to buy it just like you do. And so they're <laughs> making sure that it's available out there. Yeah, that was the PS5 conversation we had with our Sony guys. Yeah, that was pretty yeah, interesting. Yeah, they told us to go to Best Buy and buy one. Yeah. Um, let's see. So uh, AKM is a semiconductor company that makes parts such as DAX. And use. You're right. I'm sorry. You are correct on that. They do make the DAX on that. Um, I, I, I separated the HDMI from the, the amplifier portion to it. You are correct, though. They do make the DAX for it, the digital to analog converters. Um, that, that's AKM, the factory that, oh. that burned down. Um, terrible, terrible fi uh, fire, and uh, I don't know if anybody got hurt or but anything like also, that. But it burnt the mask, uh, it, so they can't make the chips. Right? Yeah, they don't have like the well for for a layman's term, they don't yeah. have the stamp. They don't have the 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 shape of it anymore. Um, Leo is uh, there. You go. Leo's installing a Yamaha RX V4 right now. Really? Where'd you um, get it? Yeah, uh, uh, Best Buy. Uh, he bought uh, it at I Best Buy and he I got said, the job. Yep, yeah, pretty much. So, okay, so. Now, great comments, guys. Please keep them coming. Uh, a, a, again, leave a comment uh, in the chat section over here on the side or leave it down in the, in the comment section below if you're coming into this after the fact. Um, you will get a chance to win uh, the CSIR kit CCUS and, and the AIO2. And the HDM AIO2. Um, so, anyways. When you're looking at AVR, things that I look for. Yeah. Now, I consider myself a fairly typical CI. Yes. As much as you and I argue on a job site. Yeah. Yeah. And we do. Yeah, pretty much. I consider myself fairly typical CI. So what I'm looking for, aside from inventory, mm -hmm. is ease of setup. And you kind of balance these things out. As, as mentioned earlier to me, the Sony is the easiest setup. Because mm -hmm. you sign into their web GUI, you can standard, enhanced. Everything you need to know is right there. Right. But there again, there are trade-offs. The Onkyo Integras or in the DNMs may have more current features mm -hmm. than the Sony does because they are they don't have this is a four year old design. Yeah. yeah. They haven't changed. Yeah. So you may not have the latest greatest. Mm -hmm. So it's a balance out of things. Now, the DNMs are fairly simple for me to set up. Onkyo Integra drives me crazy on turning HDR on and off. I actually had to find the European manual. Yeah. Yeah. Online yep. to figure out how to engage or disengage HDR in my DRX5. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because the you have to go you have to go on. And well, what's the thing that we always tell people to do whenever they're having HDMI problems with AVRs? We tell them to turn off or turn on enhanced yeah. mode. And at that point, that usually fixes whatever problem they're having. But I couldn't find that. the. It's not in the manual. Yeah. 
So Brent, let's talk about let's talk about HDMI when it comes to a receiver. Okay. Because this is a thing that we run into all the time as as a problem. So we've got a, we've got all of these HDMI inputs. We have potentially up to seven or eight, depending on the model. Well, and sometimes multiple outs. Yep. Zone one, zone two, zone three. Right. That are not parallel. There's actually a couple of AVRs that did, I don't know if they still do, mm -hmm. treat themselves as a matrix. Yeah, they, they act as a matrix. So you can put any input as a different output. Now, of course, that does change for different zoning, which throws a whole kink into things when you have... Yeah, not a fan of trying to Dolby's do multi-zone yeah. audio. Yeah. 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 Just suck it up and put in a true separate put in a, distribution system. Yeah, put in a matrix. And, and that kind of becomes that again, where they're trying to put everything into this, where it might be better for us to have separate pieces. Um, have a dedicated surround sound receiver for zone one, and then put a put a distribution system elsewhere in the system in the house for the music for the music and, and the second zones and everything else because you can break out audio or get it wherever you need to go for that. So what problems do we run into with HDMI when it comes? To, let's say we just have one in, one output, but okay. we've got six inputs. So what kind of problems do we see with AVRs when it comes to HDMI? The biggest one? Yeah. Power supplies on the TVs properly supporting the output of the AVR. Yes. And why is that, Adam? So, uh, unfortunately, um, the way that manufacturers work, uh, or many manufacturers work, is they will want to, they'll, they'll release a product, and it's X dollars when it gets released, and they're like, great, awesome, but they keep it around for a year or two years, and they realize that, okay, we gotta start cutting back on, on the cost of this thing because the price of it keeps coming down. So what they do is they start putting more and more lackluster power supplies is the first thing, usually is the first thing to go, go back and go out Because it's a finite it. cost. Exactly. So they put lower and lower quality power supplies in there because, of course, HDMI power runs backwards. The input of the TV powers the output of the device before it. So the this output one. of the AVR can actually get burned up because it needs more power and so it's trying to draw more power. It's like, it's like a brownout it's at that point. It's starving for power and you can damage the output of the AVR. Yep. So in those now, cases... what's a good solution to that? Uh, our AIO. And what else does the AIO do? Uh, it does a lot of things. So we've got hot plug interrupt on it, which of course is set on a relay. Um, we have uh, the junior is built into it. So we have EDID uh, repair built into it, or low speed data repair, mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, we've got a couple things that help out with like higher end media players. Like yep, the, particularly the Kaleidoscape. The, the Kaleidoscape. By the way, there's nothing wrong with the Kaleidoscape. I'm not dissing on them, <laughs> but they, they are fairly specific on how they want EDID to operate. They're very rigid, yes. And which is wonderful. Mm. As long as you understand that. Mm, yeah. And not every AVR meets those strict requirements. Yeah. Michael is saying uh, there, were, there were no casualties. Thank God for that. Another factory owned by, um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, uh, by, the, by the company is Hobbling Branded and Merchant Ship Suppliers. So they're trying to, to break out and do the, the different ships in other places. Uh, and he says that you're correct. It'll be into next year before all, the, all of this gets resolved. Mm. Um, and it's not going to just be AVRs. So this is really interesting. Chris McDonald is saying, I, hi, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't believe, hi Chris, th thanks for checking in. He says he doesn't believe audio control is affected by the AKM chip. I would be really curious to see if that's true because we see the AKM chip in lots of uh, things. Lots of things. Uh, in fact, I, I don't quote me on this, but I think some of our DACs have the AKM chip in, in it. Probably because it is the primary chip that's available. Yeah, now it's in, it's in uh, of course, audio receivers, it's in stereos, now, it's in cars. When, when you look at the audio, con mm -hmm. when, what I call niche products. Right. Audio control, in the audio labs, data sat, storm. Mm -hmm. um, there's the other big, um, I hate vapor login, it's got 11.2 XLR outputs and all that on it. Oh, um, you're talking about the audio control? No, 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 no. no, no, no. The, no. Um, um, a very high-end unit. The Macintosh? No, it's a 20 grand unit, but okay. a lot of these units utilize the same HDMI board. What mm -hmm. they don't utilize the same is the audio boards. Gotcha. Because most of these companies have their own analog thought processes. Which is good because we get a little bit of competition on the quality right. and everything else. And there's not a, there's only, if you're a company and you want to sell an HDMI enabled product, mm -hmm. you got to have a lot of jack to yep. develop that board. Yeah. So when you look at... <laughs> as we at, know. <laughs> as we know. When you look at a Sony or a DNM or an Onkyo Integra or a Yamaha, they're selling that basic board with minor enhancements across a wide variety of products. Right. When you're looking at an Anthem or an Indie Audio Labs or Synthesis from JBL mm -hmm. or... Is Harman Kardon even still in business? I think so, yeah. I, I don't know um, what they're building anymore. They, they, I think they're licensing their name more than anything now. But yeah, There's these smaller companies mm -hmm. that their focus is actually on better audio. Yeah. 
and they do it. Yeah. And they'll give you up to 11.2 because they are working directly with Dolby mm -hmm. to get the best Atmos and DTS where companies that sell AVRs will give you a 5.1, 5 5.2, 5 7.2 Atmos. Yeah. But they assume if you're spending a, a, a grand on the high side for an AVR, mm -hmm. you're probably not putting in 11.2 channels of audio in a room. Now there is a case, uh, I know for myself, the, the Marantz that, that um, it was the uh, SR7015, that yep. might be wrong. One of, one of their bigger um, hitters. One of the bigger ones. Now that one uh, did have 11 outputs on it. Yep. I, and, but, however, I don't remember, it's been a little while since I've messed with that one, but I don't believe it had, it had like 11.2 uh, actually is what it had um, uh, with two subwoofer outputs. But it also had like the last four outputs were not powered, were not amplified. You actually had to have a separate a amplifier separate for amplifier, that. Right. Now, it didn't have XLR now, outputs. When you but, get into these other yeah. companies like the, you know, the, the Ac or the Indie Audio Labs, the data sets, the mm -hmm. ETIs, guys like this, they're straight pre-pros. Yeah. So, but their focus is absolutely on how good can we make the audio. Right. And as you move up in AVRs, look, the difference between, when you look at AVRs, you'll see a 100 watt per channel AVR, for 449, you'll see a 110 watt per channel AVR for 849. Now, hold on. Back in the days of when I was doing car audio stuff, which I didn't do very much, I was just doing, you know, just kind of filling in. When a 100 watt amplifier was available, it wasn't really 100 watts. It was 100 watts peak. Are these well, more, no, they're real. more, are these real, real. RMS power? If, if you're looking at a, at a Sony, a Yamaha, an Onkyo, an Integra, Pioneer now, which is owned by Onkyo Integra. Mm -hmm. Um, a DNM product, an Anthem product, that power's real. Yeah. But what is the difference between a 100 watt per channel, $440, $50 AVR, and a 110 watt per channel, $850 AVR? Other than $400 and 10 watts per channel. Uh, quality at that point. It, what when makes it comes, that difference? So um, going back to, uh, I think I said it before, is it, are we talking about now signal to noise ratio uh, well, and quality of the amplifier? That is the result yes. of that $400. Okay. What, did, what are you buying with that $400? Mm, hopefully not a name. Current. Okay. Power. Yeah. Not wattage, but current. Okay. So when you go from... Um, I think this is 1100 up to say a, a 5100. Mm -hmm. the, the power rating is not that much higher on the paper. Yeah. You know, 100 to 125, 100 to 110, whatever it is. So you're not buying big gobs of watts. Yeah. What you're buying is more current. Yes. And current, whether it's an AVR or a display, mm -hmm. current is the most important thing we deal with in audio and video systems. So again, we're going back to a good power supply, Absolutely. a good amplifier well, that, that's able to trans, uh, transmit that, that okay, information. This is, this is actually reasonably heavy. Yeah. There's a decent power supply in that. Yes. You've picked up the amplifier that's in my office, mm -hmm. the A51 Parasound. Oh yeah. Now, granted it's more wattage, but the real key to that thing yep. is that big giant power supply for more current. Yes. Now, if you buy an Anthem, you mm -hmm. know, that big Anthem amp, or if you buy a Parasound, or you buy a, an Acurus, mm -hmm. the reason you're spending that money, and you will spend a lot more money for a five-channel amp yep. than you will for a 7.2 or 11.2 AVR, yep. is that big, giant power supply and current. However, we have to look at our customers. That is a much smaller niche of our world than even our world. Yeah. AVRs are still Mm -hmm. the number one sellers. Yep. Um, I still use an AVR in my house as my pre-pro, even though it's an AVR, going into my A51. Yeah. Because it works. It works really well. It and works. for what you need out and, of it, it's and perfect. to go up to a separate pre-pro mm -hmm. was just out of my spendable range. And that moment. Now, of course, we know At that, that moment, that you are, changed. I was going to say, well, I mean, now you're a YouTube star and I mean, you are, um, you are Mr. HDMI. I am I mean, Mr. You are. is what I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So did I mention that? Uh, we have been getting some really awesome comments in, in, in the comment section. Uh, Mark did some research really quick and listed out a bunch of different DACs that are, that are out there, manufacturers. Um, uh, the conversation is really going in there talking about the, the shortage and whatnot. Uh, both Mark and Michael are talking about, and Leo is there as well, um, and they're really talking about the different capabilities of the different manufacturers and the quality of the DACs, because that's a really important part well, of these know, systems. When you look at 
for, for those of you who are not me, a DAC is a digital to audio converter. Right. And that's built into all of these. That's how you get the signal from your HDMI or your optical, your mm -hmm. digital coax, into a signal that can be put into the amplifier. Yeah. Very seldomly does the amplifier take a pure digital signal into it. Yeah. Because there's a whole lot going on, and it still has to convert it out of digital into analog at some point anyway. At some point, eventually. So the DAC yeah. is very critical. And that, yes, the difference between a $450 AVR at 100 mm -hmm. watts per channel and an $850 AVR at 110 watts per channel should be an improved DAC. Yep. Typically, it is. Yeah. Now, it could still be from the same manufacturer, and it could still sit on the same die. So how does a good DAC compare to a not good DAC? What's the biggest difference there? Well, it's very much like HDMI. It's mm -hmm. all the same, right? It's just ones and zeros. It's just a, yeah, exactly. It's, it's just, just a one, it's and, one zero, and zero right? coming through, right? Yeah, come on. How well does it take that information? How much of that information? Mm -hmm. Remember, you don't have to have 100% of the information right. to get a lock. Yep. But you, and you'll get audio. Mm -hmm. But it can be a little anemic, just like the video cannot be as good. Now, as you get more and more data pulled off that stream, yep. you can get fuller data. Now, in audio, fullness is width, height, depth, and detail in image. Right. So the difference between, you know, everybody's seen the $110 five HDMI input Atmos AVR from somebody. Yep. And it sounds pretty much like this because they don't have the ability because of the cost. Oh, but it sounds so much better than the speakers in the TV. Well, yes, it does. <laughs> and don't forget you've got that $199 5.1 speaker system with the thin plastic housing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep, yep. So, so fullness of sound, breadth, width, depth. Right. It's just like headphones. Yep. The more, and there is a direct relation between what you spend and what you get. Yep. Or should be anyway. Yeah. Unless you're buying a name, and then any running problems. Now, DACs, the, the main way that they work, of course, is, is based on the sampling. When, when they get the data coming in from the signal, from whatever it is, whether it be a Blu-ray or a CD or whatever it is that's coming in, whether it be digital, um, well, pardon me, well, when it it's a digital be, signal. It's a DAC. Yeah, so when the digital signal comes in, if it's a high-quality digital signal, the sample rate on that signal may be very high. Well, um, and I'm not going to use numbers rate, right now. There's because, not a lot of options on sample rates. Right. So... Regardless of, you know, there are, there are DACs in portable CD players mm -hmm. because, you know, our, our poor, you know, I, um, portable media players. Yeah. Because you have to take that digital signal and convert it to a headphone jack. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking media players are now in 1995. Yep. So how good can it be? Yeah. Now, you can go out and buy a standalone DAC for several thousand dollars mm -hmm. and they still exist. So how do you get from $20? two thousand dollars it's much like the 440 to 850 dollar avr change yep the better the power supply the more information that can be processed and once you get to the analog section mm. yep this is where the dollars really start coming in because analog ain't cheap no digital is a lot cheaper than analog is yep to build a really good analog path is an old school engineering feat and a lot of the new kids aren't there aren't there yeah you know the old guys the legacy guys ain't real good in digital but the new kids ain't that good in analog right there's always the exception yeah dnm does a great job on audio mm -hmm. mac Acurus, the niche companies the data sets of the world do a phenomenal job on that because they have audio engineers that understand that so when you're talking about the separates then you really need to make sure that both separates have the quality because right. if, if you get a, a separate amplifier that's an amazing amplifier it's done by some of the high-end guys that they put you know uh, way too much time and effort into it and or not way too much but they put enough time and effort into it that becomes a really First good off, thing there's no such thing as too much only not enough they, there you go then of course you have you pair it with something that you know you spent say two thousand dollars on a on a five channel amplifier or, sorry, or more i was gonna say that's that, that's, that's more entry range at that point mm. so let's go let's go okay you just spent 10 grand okay how about that okay you just spent 10 grand on, a, on an amplifier but then you only spend under a grand for the for the the preamp at that point you're you're hindering yourself you're bottlenecking you yourself are. yeah um are you going to go out and buy a really nice hot rod and put skinny tires on it uh no 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 i mean you can it I looks mean, funny and would, it's okay you know. would you, you you on your jeep would you go put straight up 
high mileage, hard rubber street tires on your Jeep and go off the road? No. No. No, definitely not. Because yeah. you're going to get your butt stuck in a hurry uh, yep. and you're going to sit there all day long yep. looking like an idiot. Well, especially with this Florida mud or sand that's out here, you're not going to be able to go and anywhere. It's the same thing. Now, AVRs are still a really good compromise. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. I think they're, they're great. And listen, the majority of people that are buying AVRs have never had an AVR to begin with. And so as soon as you get into that, even the even the entry level stuff still sounds better than what they expect. It sounds phenomenal. And of course, pairing them with a good speaker that, that goes with it as well, making sure that the speaker now, pairs see, with the, the amplifier. Thing. Yeah. Just because you buy, you know, a Sony sitting here. So you go out and buy yourself a Sony 3100. Yeah. You have to look at you as a CI. Yep. You need to pick a couple of brands. You don't want to be a brand whore and yep. have everything in the world. Pick a couple of brands and audition them understand yep. the speaker mm -hmm. when back in the days of two channel for mm -hmm. us legacy dinosaurs we sold tell toshiba had avr had receivers back then yeah very nice ones but that wasn't what made the difference it was the speakers yes there's marginal changes here but mm -hmm. it's really the speakers yeah really good question that just came okay out. i'm really really happy with this one uh, Chris McDonald is asking. Hello, Chris. Really, really great question, Chris. I, I like this. When you get to this point, when once you've already got the, and I'm assuming at this point, you've got your AVR picked out, we'll go a decent AVR, maybe a, a either 1100 or a, or a 2100 ES. So, somewhere in the 750 to $1,200 range. Sure. You've got a decent system. When using Roku, Amazon, or Apple TV, what is the best audio setting to leave it on? He says, I know that this is a loaded question because there seems to be no standard for audio. Well, Actually, there, there is. is. Yes, exactly. And okay, first off, the audio is really going to be determined by the content. Hey, well, yeah, and, and actually, I'm going to take I'm going to take a step further. The audio is going to be depending on what content you're watching and on what setup you are using. Are you How using just a 5.1 setup? You can use Dolby Audio, just regular surround sound. Right, because there's no Atmos does not really gain you in a standard 5.1. To an extent. Now, they will get you a lot of really good quality. So, like, the separation works out a little bit better with the Dolby Atmos because it's more processor-based. Object-driven versus Object -driven. channel yep, exactly. Driven. So, um, it's it's more accurate for where it's supposed to be at um, versus having the engineers in, in there working it, you know, from the dials, moving from space to space. Um, uh, uh, it, okay, yeah. before you go past that one, mm. let's talk about Atmos and AVRs. Correct. This one I'm not that familiar with. Okay. If I have a, again, to pick, if I have a $450 AVR, and I have an $850 AVR. Yep. What is the Atmos processing capability difference? Is there? I don't. And I don't know this. That, that I know. So processing capability, I don't have now, a good answer a good for point. that. Mark probably knows this one. Mark or Michael will probably know that one pretty good. Um, so when we are looking at the AVRs, in most cases, from what I've seen anyways, other than having a better processor that's faster and able to respond better, um, I don't see a big difference between that. The biggest difference I do see is the number of outputs. The number of channels that are available. Exactly. So the number of channels. Now, so if you have just the five channels, or even the seven channels, um, you I can wish have I had room for seven. Yeah, right. Now, with the of course with Atmos, technically you can have a stereo Atmos setup, mm -hmm. and because they have Atmos speakers, you know, uh, headphones, yeah, binaural um, headphones, and it does make a difference. But they do that thing that Bose does, where they they mess with the audio to make it sound like it's coming from a different direction. Um, uh, I don't know if they were the first ones to do that no. or not, but um, way back in the eighties. Okay. Legacy again. Here we go. There's a company called Aphex. A P H E X. Okay. And what they did is they took a little bit of the left channel and injected it with a slight delay and reverb into the right channel and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And one of the early recordings of this, if you listen to Linda Ronstadt's, okay. the album where she's on the skates in the front yep. of it, it sounded better on FM radio than almost any other recording out there. Yeah. Because they mixed it to sound really, really wide mm -hmm. on lo fi systems by using oral exciting. Yeah. Yeah, they were able to trick it. A-U-R-A-L. Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, they do what now? Oral exciting. Oral exciting. A-U-R-A-L. A oh, A-U-R-A-L. Not O-R-A-L. OK. So. And that's what exactly what they're doing with that, is it <laughs> takes out the ears. So let's see. It's still, uh, we, we've got the, the rest of the, of the people watching chiming in. Uh, Michael is saying depends on what type of streaming uh, device you're using. That's true. Some of them have Atmos, some don't and have some Atmos. Some of them have really lousy audio sections. They just have a, a terrible audio section. Um, I don't like Amazons. Um, the Fire Sticks? Yeah, the Fire they're Sticks. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they don't really have that that much. Um, he the says. Roku, I 
I, it's funny because mm. you and I have argued about this. Yeah. I'm not a big Roku fan. Sure. But I do find the hardware has fewer problems. Yes. Than the Amazon hardware. Oh, I and love I Roku's. do find the audio. Yeah. Sounds better. I really, really like Roku's. I just like Amazon's interface. Interface. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Chris is saying we end up bouncing between Dolby or PCM. Um, usually, with, uh, when it comes to Atmos, you're going to be, of course, on Bitstream uh, because they want Bitstream uh, for the best layman terms for Bitstream is it's the raw data just being sent through. It's and not the being processor at yeah. the at the AVR is doing it's all handling the work. all of it. Yeah, exactly. Um, not your source. And, and Michael said, actually, he says he picks Bitstream rather than PCM whenever possible. Um, really good, good way for that. Um, Let's see, other low-level features to consider that come with the added price you can put stuff in. So, yeah, one of the things that, that you can look at, it, it, going back to the layout of your system, if you're working with a 5.1 or if you're working with just a sound bar, which, again, don't knock sound yeah. bars too much because and they're decent of, uh, in quality. For, it's all about application. Exactly. Now, and what kind of brings us back to this. Mm. Sound bars can be a bit of an issue for a lot of products, as can CEC or ARC. Yep. Now, we kind of need to, I like sound bars because for bedrooms, things like that, it's simple, it's easy, mm -hmm. and you don't need any other external, you just plug everything in the TV and you go. Yeah. That's actually nice. Yeah. We couldn't do that 10 years ago. Correct. However, let's talk about ARC and eARC while we're in the AVRs. We do need to talk about that. Um, so the reality is, of course, now that you are dealing with uh, TVs that are smart, they have all of the streaming services built into the TV. Uh, put you a have, Roku or an Amazon in. Uh, I mean, honestly, put a Roku or an Amazon in because this ARC and eARC both. And eARC is better than, than ARC because it's, it's more capable it's and, it's, and it's, it's Atmos capable. It's also the, the, the governing body that's over it, that's, that's watches it. A little bit it, more tighter than ARC was. Which was great. Um, however, for all intents and purposes, put a Roku in there, put an Apple TV in the system. Don't use the smart apps on the TV because honestly, it's just going to wind up being simpler and easier to use to begin with. And if you want to have that one ro one remote control and you really like that Samsung remote, in most of these systems, CEC passes straight through and you can, can uh, continue to use it. Or uh, Amazon has a really great remote for theirs. The volume control and everything else is really intuitive. Yeah, but you know, strangely um, enough, it doesn't work on CEC. Remember we tested that. It works on, on, IR. on IR. Yeah, it, well, it picks up the EDIT information spits it in into its programming and uh, it gives you IR control. what to do because yeah. remember we thought it was on CEC yeah. and yeah. it wasn't. And so you cover up the front of the, uh, of the remote and figure out that it's not. Um, so yeah, no, really good, really, really good points on that. ARC and eARC, if you have to use it, make sure you, you understand the limitations of it. One of the biggest limitations, of course, is distance because in most ARC applications, the ARC channel is not active. Yep, and by the way, when he's talking about distance, whether it's fiber or copper, the limit to ARC or eARC being reliable is about 45 feet. Mm -hmm. So 30 feet's a better option. Yeah, if you can get away with 30 yeah. feet, that, which is sometimes kind of hard because, of course, if it's in the back of the room to the front of the room. That's why you want to yeah. don't use. First off, I'm not a fan of, of Android smart apps. Sure. Built into TVs. I'm not a fan of WebOS. Mm -hmm. Whatever Samsung calls that mess. Uh, that's, even, that, that's the bottom of the yeah. barrel for me, yeah. The the uh, the Roku uh, TVs work pretty well. well I, I it's like a those. Roku. I, it, it, because it is a Roku. It's that, a Roku. That's exactly it. It and works let's really face well. It, we're not yeah. integrating TCLs. Yeah. Because they don't offer discrete commands. Right. Yeah. Uh, or you know yeah exactly. So. Uh, oh man, really great comments in these. I'm I'm just I, I I'm stopped talking to you and I'm just well, reading these comments. They're we they're. Need, <laughs> we really need to be able to put that up in big fonts for the old man to read. Excuse me, the legacy fellow. The, the legacy fellow. The legacy fellow. Legacy read. fellow. That's what we need. We need a shirt that says legacy fellow. That's what we need. Duly noted. Duly noted. Um, we'll do we'll do a uh, uh, legacy fella and uh, what what should I have? Chump. 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 <laughs> um, okay, so. Uh, here's what I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a, of a feel for what's going on here in the chat. One of the big things that they run into is the, the, the audio format and making it work the way that it's supposed to. <laughs> so, um, and actually this, this kind of goes back to, uh, uh, I believe it was Chris who asked the question. Um, uh, yeah, Chris, uh, Chris was asking the question about, well, what is the standard? So it's very... And what you see, Chris, in, in the chat and what's going on with it, if you're watching it, is just that, that it's very difficult to make sure that 
everything works all the way through, you really kind of have to start at one point and build the project, look at it again, and make sure that, okay, do all the specs now, match? How do you build that project? Okay. Okay, let's assume we're not doing a bedroom. We're not doing a $1,000 room. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to set up, we have a decent sized room. Sure. We're going to put in multi-channel audio. Yep. And we're not building a theater. It's not a 110 inch screen. It's not, you know. Sure. But we still want a good sound. Where do you start the room design? I honestly, um, I'm going to start with the AVR because the AVR is going to dictate what's going on in, 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 the, en in the environment. And if I go for an AVR that has the most capability for the price and what I'm going for, um, that's usually where I'm going to start. See, I'm going to start with my speakers. Okay. I'm going to look at my room. Well, because, uh, of course, at that point, now you, you put a higher priority to the speakers and, and the way that they sound. Absolutely, because what I will do mm -hmm. is, first off, we're kind of back to inventory. Yes. So. Yes, that's very true. Selecting my AVR at this point is kind of out the window because I'm going to get whatever's available. Yeah. And that's why, starting with the, looking at the room, starting with the speakers. Mm -hmm. Am I going to do a 5-1, a 5-2, a 7-1, a 10-1, a 9-1? Sure. What am I going to do? That's based on the room. Yep. Once I have done that, yes. It, it, uh, sorry, you, you are correct. You're, you're going on the layout of yeah, the of I'm the sound my stage. System. Yeah. So when, when we're messing with the sound stage, so let's say, let, let's let's define that then. So let's say we have room enough for the five uh, listening level speakers, and then we have additional room in the uh, uh, ceiling. Ceiling. Thank you uh, for That's an the, additional four. The part up. Yes, exactly. We have a room enough for additional four okay. in the ceiling, right? It, it's a decent. Atmos system. Okay. It's a. It's a very. Th th this is like one of those. You know, um, uh, deck and four, right? Uh, deck and four. Deck and four. Deck and four. Right? For the car audio days, mm -hmm. you replace it's the radio and replace all four. four. But we'll go with deck a unit and four. four. Well, Make deck and four. Better. Well, listen. When I'm working over here, that's that. And I, different terminology. It's it's east versus west. Anyways, so we have the five. The five. We have four in the ceiling, and then of course we have the subwoofer. So we have a. Correct me. Uh, I, it's been a little while. Five four one. We have a five point four four point one. So we'll first at, at, at one, the one, end. Yep. yep. Um, so that's kind of our layout. So okay. then at that point, I'm so going to pick an amplifier that can handle that, right? Well, it's not just that because now we can start being. We can start answering his question. Mm. What audio do we want to do? Since we can do the Atmos speakers at this point, a lot of the audio selection has actually been taken out of our hands. Yes. Because the AVR we select. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, you start looking at, okay, which AVR offers the best 5.4.1 processing? And then it will vary from brand to brand as to how well they do that. Good question, I take it. <laughs> it's just a really great comment. Mark Silver saying, does this mean that I should replace my Sony SQD2020? Do you remember what that one? What is an SQD2020? It's an, he says it's an SQ adapter in his system. Oh. Um, this is, here, you want to see a picture of it? Yeah. This, uh, and I don't know if I could put this up on the screen, guys, so I'm really sorry, but you have to look it up on your own. Uh, it's one of these. Oh, oh man. There you go. I, wow. Step aside. So uh, you want to take a look at that? Uh, no. <laughs> no, do not replace that. If you're going to get rid of it, give it to us. <laughs> yeah, hold on a second. Wow. Why is that not all oh, cookies? I got to agree to cookies to see that picture. This is why I use an Apple. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, just, just hit agree. There you go. Yeah. Oh, you're hitting too many buttons. Go away, go away. Go away. Go away. Okay. But no, no, no. <laughs> keep, keep that, damn it. Um, I tell you what I would do. I would look at the uh, resistors and the caps to see if they're leaking. Yeah. And you might want to improve the, you know, buy the, the buy the, 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 buy the step up versions. Yeah. Because that's a cool piece. Yeah. Uh, Leo makes a really good point. He says, sometimes too many is too much and sounds like a bunch of <laughs> mashed up okay. AH. Do you know what timber matching is? Uh, where you make sure that all the speakers have the same timber. And so, yes. uh, uh, or, generally, well, no, you, I, I was going to say. You want it, an oak or pine, you know, so you want them to. Sure. Well, I, I was going to say timber matching. Does that mean that I'm chopping down a tree and you're chopping down a tree and we, we no, they, they fall at the same time? No, you're going to be much time? faster than okay. me because I'm all a legacy fella. Right. Yeah. Um, we're, having too much, we're having too much fun with today's episode. Um, um, it's going long, too. <laughs> but when, you're, when, you're, when you're setting up the room with proper timber matching, yes. Atmos can be really, really involving. Well, because it's very precise it, uh, with, with Dolby it Atmos. It's, it's not yeah. a sound here and a sound there and a sound there. And in the early days of surround sound, mm -hmm. 
It's like, well, I'm not hearing the rear channels. Well, sir, because nothing's happening. People actually wanted sound there when there was no reason. So, you know, I got to yep. hear them. I paid for them. Yep, yep. No, exactly. But when you're listening. <laughs> Put it in all channel stereo. <laughs> yes. yes. I, had, I had a few clients that they, we, we put this awesome surround sound system in there, and they're like, they got very upset with me because it, it was just that. It was, hey, these speakers aren't working. No, they, they are working. It's just there's nothing happening there because it's not, there's nothing happening but behind you. But I want to hear it. Okay, I'm going to put it in, in, in all channel stereo and, uh, and, and we'll listen to it. And you hit that, and of course, wow, it sounds amazing. And I'm, okay, do you want it this way or the other way? No, this way. I want it this way. I want, I want all channel stereo. We, we're running out of time, so let, let's go back here. So we've, we've, picked, we've designed the room, but let's pretend we've designed the room, all the acoustics and everything are set up. We've got all the, all the sound absorption and, and everything by the way, else. Should we have a. Uh uh, broadcast on room acoustic design HAA. Let us know over in the chat. Let us know over here or down in the comments. Should we have a, an episode about Should we bring room in acoustics? An HAA specialist and talk about. We this? know a couple, right? Yeah. We we can get somebody in here to do that, um, or at least on that. So um, okay, so we've designed the room, and now we're back to figuring out. Now we need, of course, we need a a, a 5.4.2 capable or one, sorry, 0.1 capable AVR. So we do our, our research. Now that's just one. Um, criteria spec in f picking out the AVR. Right now, the other specs are, in all honesty, what's your control system? How well does it integrate with it? Yes. And you and I, we are conflicting control systems. Yes. Yep. So I I'm the better one. You're the okay one. I'm the legacy fella. Yeah, legacy fella. Yeah, exactly. So, what product is going to best fit all the needs? <laughs> And then, as we currently know, what's available, which yeah. could throw everything completely out the window. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, does Days of Thunder do that? Uh, Chris McDonald's saying he remembers 15-ish years ago a customer wanted the NASCAR cars to go around the room. I, I don't know if the, if the newer version of Days of Thunder, if they do that, like if it, if it actually whirls around the room or not. Okay, so uh, a, a completely <laughs> off topic, but a cool story. Days of Thunder, all the interior scenes, the barn scenes, yep. every scene that was not filmed at the racetrack. Yep was filmed on Metro property. Yeah, it was filmed in our, in our warehouse. Over um, off of the, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, warehouse uh, up the street. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't give away too many details now. now. one more thing about that, because the original Top Gun uh -huh. on VHS, yep. when they encoded it for Dolby, not Dolby Digital, because there was no Dolby Correct, Digital. Correct, it was still stereo. When, no, it was, it was Dolby. It was okay. left minus right with the 70 millisecond delay for the rear channels. Gotcha. Left plus right, no delay for the center front. Ah. That's what Dolby originally was. When they encoded it on the video cassettes, it did not work in surround because they only encoded one channel. <laughs> so what you had was this complete mismatch. Mess. <laughs> I was going to say, you get a mess The laser disc, it. however, worked. So now the next part of deciding on the AVR for your system, it, it depends because are you picky and choosy on what source device you're, gonna, you're going to use? Or are you kind of agnostic to that? Does it really now, matter? And here's another question. Mm -hmm. Are all of your sources going to be enhanced? No. Okay. Well, uh, okay, so yeah, you're, you're asking the question of, of in, in this project. So you're asking this question because very simply, HDMI is what keeps you and I, uh, we, we get a paid, well, yeah, we're, we're employed. We still get a paycheck because of it. So one of the biggest things that we run into, of course, is that you put your cable box, you know, your Comcast or whoever it is, you put that in there, but you also then put in your Sony uh, um, UBP X800 or X1000, uh, you know, Blue, uh, Ultra HD Blu-ray player in there with Dolby Atmos and all that kind of good stuff, HDR and everything else. You put both of those in there. However, your Comcast cable box, when it gets connected to an HDMI 2.0 spec AVR, we won't even talk about 2.1, an HDMI 2.0 spec a a AVR, uh, sometimes what will happen is it will just not give you a picture because it says it, it's it's back here talking like this trying to figure out how to you know get connected to this stuff i got some cable over here for you some shows to watch and this and the avr is up here saying no i'm you know it, it's speaking yeah, some alien degree. yeah it's speaking some alien language because now we're we're up on a new level at that point so but then of course the sony uh, Blu-ray player is able to communicate directly with it because they're both on that same level. So it just confuses the cable box, and at that point, the cable box might just say, I don't know what else to give you. And I'm not going to give you anything. Why, when you're looking at 4K and HDR, there's additional metadata. Mm -hmm. And essentially, that metadata is running right over the standard EDID, mm -hmm. and it's speaking loud. Mm -hmm. 
and the cable box doesn't know what to do so it does nothing because it can't parse this information right. and understand it so if you have enhanced meaning HDR and non enhanced meaning standard you need an AVR that allows <laughs> you to select those inputs Leo you can hit us up on Instagram it's uh, at AV tech tips uh, uh, you can hit us up on Instagram he's and money? he's gonna send us pictures uh, he's working uh, he's working in a basement that has like a thousand beer koozies if you guys want that are in the chat want to see what he, what he did on on that he's gonna send us some pictures maybe you know what? I don't know if we should do that or not because that's a client's home. He'd have to get the okay from the client first for us to do that. But you can, you can send us the pictures. You can DM the pictures to us. We can see what's going okay. on. Okay. Uh, Anyways. Completely off topic. This uh, is awesome. You're going way off topic. Tell me yesterday he needed to put a reset on a job. Uh huh. He took an easy button. Lay, lay that and down. I'll, I'll, I'll put it to a relay. Let's see. Hold on. Let's. Uh, one, two. I don't know if they can see that or not. There you go. They put a self destruct button. He just oh, took, an, put, easy, put he took an easy button <laughs> and tied it to a relay for, for a reset on his uh, network. That's great. We're having too much fun, Brent. We're running out of time, so we need are we, we need to. An hour? Uh, we are at an hour. We need to pretty much wrap this How up. How many? Who else here? Who's we've still? we've got. Um, Let's say hi. We've got uh, 19 current viewers. Uh, uh, give us a roll call, guys. Of course, we've got Michael, who's been commenting the entire time. Leo, Leo, Leo it's always great to hear from you. Um, ESCTX um, has been chiming in here and there, and it's been great to hear from you as well. Uh, Mark Silver, uh, along the way. Do we need to continue this on into pre-pros? Um, and a better question, do we want to really discuss two-channel hi-fi? Oh, man. Oh, man. Do we want to bring in real audio? All right, guys. Let us, know, let us know in, in the chat and down in the comments. I, uh, today we don't have time. No, no, no. Today no. we don't have should, time. Do yeah. we do another show? Let us know in the chat what you guys want to hear. Should we go ahead and, and break this down a little bit more? Talk about pre-pros. Talk about hi-fi systems. Talk about stereo. Um, can you? Do you have this stuff? Can oh, you bring some yes. of this stuff in and, and we can talk about I it? Do. I'm legacy fella. <laughs> He's a legacy fella. Let us know over in the chat do what you guys want to see. Uh, now, the amazing thing about all of this, guys, is that whether it's legacy product that you're working with uh, or if it's the today's newest and greatest, if you are you know, a, a lucky, uh, um, I'm not allowed to say that on live stream, uh, if you're a lucky person who has uh, gotten their hands on it, uh, the good news is, of course, is that you can contact us with any questions. We are happy to help out with any of that. And we any have, new knowledge you have, please share with yeah, us. Yeah, we've got products that help out with lots of problems. We have products that will get you connected from one thing to another, and we're happy to help out designing those systems as well. Um, um, and completely, not off the topic, but not, uh, Adam and I have been discussing a Friday podcast. So actually, we are going to do it. Okay, it's, it's, it's a given. Come back on Friday at 3 p.m., uh, um, this not week. this week because I won't be here. Oh, you're not going to be here. Remember, I'm out on Friday. So come That's back on, on my, Friday. Uh, if you look at the calendar. Come back on Friday. I will be here at 3 p.m. <laughs> I think we're going to do it anyways because we, we, I've already worked really, it out with, with I, You with, know, the uh, things I can't share with you on video. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, we're going to get it figured it out. Can under the table? <laughs> What we're going to do, guys, is we're going to do, uh, we, we do these tech tips for you because, of course, you're out there in the field. We want to get good information to you. Um, and so we try not to make this solely about our products. We want to make it about the theory of whatever it is we're talking about. But on Fridays, we wanted to give it an opportunity to actually talk about our product and how it works for you. Uh, and give a little bit more of a long form uh, idea of how to use that stuff. So come back this Friday. Um, we will be talking about something. I don't know what it is yet. We're still working it out. Um, but I will be there. And I think I'm going to get Will on there with me. Uh, okay. Or one of the other guys with me on there. And then, of course, you can pick up when, when you come back. Um, and we're going to be talking about yeah, our some product. Of actually have to work. Yeah, exactly. We'll be talking about our product and how it works and how it can work for you. So come back on Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to be the same time as what we do uh, our same Wednesdays. Same bat channel. Same bat channel. Same different bat, bat day. Um, but come back and check out on that. As always, guys, this has been an amazing episode. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you for the comments. Uh, everybody who's been in the comment section, this has been amazing. Keep it up. Uh, keep those comments coming down Remember in the chat section. Remember, in the running for the AIO and the yes, CS it does. Yes, it does. CUS. Yep, exactly. So go ahead and do that, guys. Uh, and Brent, we need to wrap this up, man. We've got we've got too much going on. We need to go ahead and go. Um, well, um, so uh, reboot early. Reboot often. Don't cut your wires too short. Nope. Uh, uh, turn off CEC and call tech support. And call tech support. I'm Brent. I'm Adam. And by the way, what's your thought of the, uh, Yo, the studio? You, what do you think of the layout? Yeah. You like it? Is it good? All right, guys. We'll Bye. see you all next time. Thank you so much.